this time I'd like to begin the meeting um, with a series of presentations uh, regarding our mayor's plan for the ice rink. So I'm going to call, I'm going to switch over and send the direction of the meeting to our mayor, Mayor Cohn. Thank you, Council President. <clears throat> and uh, as I get started, I just want to remind folks that one of our jobs as council members and as mayor is to try to provide for the public um, a, a stable tax base to try to keep taxes stable and at the same time provide programs that everybody can enjoy, even though we all know that each enjoy different things. And one of the purposes of redevelopment was to actually look at properties that were in disrepair, weren't providing the type of tax base that we need, and were clearly areas that had fallen into uh, blight and were a stain on the, on the township, and turn those around so that we could increase the pie to be able to provide those two basic features. And that basically takes us to um, taxes and providing services and programs and facilities to the residents. Tonight, we are gonna talk about um, our first attempt at trying to bring back something to the community that is a public service and from the, uh, the advent and from the money coming out of redevelopment. Uh, and that is the uh, story of how we got to this point tonight on the, the ice rink. Uh, we started the whole redevelopment process by going out to the public several years ago, asking them that if we had money coming in from pilot p payments from these projects, what type of things would they like us to provide. And in no specific order, the things were very clear. They wanted a community center with a pool. They wanted a expansion of the community, community arts center and the ice rink. And, you know, we can't get, I think over time with redevelopment and as we start to see more come on board, we can get all of them. Um, and obviously everybody has a preference, but um, sometimes an opportunity presents itself which makes it easier to go with one of those three options over the other. And that's what happened when we entered into uh, negotiations with Garden Homes for what to do with the property behind Dixon Coles, which is located at 110 Tices. And we negotiated that uh, parcel um, in a way that provided, among many other things to the township, road repairs and stormwater issues, connectivity, light repairs, and obviously um, a, a removal of any of their tax appeals. Uh, they also deeded back to the township about a third of that entire piece of property, amounting to about eight acres of land, along with them paying for all of the site improvements for whatever community project we would put on that site. The estimated value of that alone is closer to about the $10 million range. Township Council back last year uh, looked at what could be done with that space, and we had approved uh, DMR, our planner and engineer, to help put together a plan for an ice rink on that property. It clearly would not have um, been able to fit a community center with a pool, uh, and it, well, we already have an art center, so that made the most sense on that piece of property. And so we approved the ability for them to go out, put a site plan together, engineering plans, along with bid documents. In anticipation of a ICE arena, um, and after many years of sustained um, effort and input from hockey parents in and around East Brunswick, East Brunswick for the first time last year fielded a um, hockey team for the high school, which competed. It didn't have the greatest season, but it was a, it was a start. And, um, and then from that point, we started a coordinated work between uh, DMR, the ICE specialist that had spoken to us at the, at the first time um, they presented here, our planning and engineering department, parks and recreation, and we actually put together a ICE rink committee of people in town who either have been hockey players, work in the industry, kids in the uh, playing hockey, uh, um, skaters that are into ice skating, not necessarily um, uh, figure skating, not necessarily hockey, and those people came together and worked as a group to come up with uh, a plan that's being presented to you tonight. Um, one of the first questions that they had to answer was ultimately the land had the ability to have two rinks. Do we do one rink at a time or do we do both rinks at once? When it was presented to the council 
last year, it was under the idea that we would build one rink and when it became profitable, we would use that money to build a second rink. Um, but the committee looked at that very clearly. They worked with experts. They spoke to a lot of different people, s those who, who have run public owned ice rinks in the area. And they came to the conclusion that all things being equal, it made more sense to do two rinks at once. And there's multiple reasons for that. Um, one, the overall cost of doing two rinks at once will be lower than if you did them in, in, in installments. Secondly, the second rink, if you're going to do one, would have to be placed behind where the first rink is. And looking at the property, there's absolutely no access from behind the property. So in order for them to build a second rink, big construction material will be driving over all the site work that we've just had uh, the developer pay for, all of the water sewer lines, all of the, the parking lots, sidewalks, and fixing that would then come at the township's expense. And that's something that we didn't think was wise. In addition, uh, the third thing was that the ability to show profitability in the rinks is predicated on the facility having outside users besides just those of us that live in East Brunswick, much like the pool. Much of the profit that comes out of the pool utility comes from those that live outside the township. Uh, and so we felt that um, one rink would be primarily used by those of us that live here, which is fair, we're paying for it, but that in order to make it profitable, you need two rinks so that you can use the second rink for outside um, tournaments, outside um, teams coming in and using it. And then finally, when you look at just raw numbers, the expenses for two rinks aren't necessarily double the expense of one, but the profitability is significantly higher. So the ability to get to a profitable place um, comes much quicker if you build two at once. Uh, after the plans were put together, it was put in front of the planning board about a month ago, and then the final plans are what are here tonight in front of you and will be presented and discussed uh, this evening. The um, discussion tonight will take place between and presentation from DMR, from Keith Kipp, our Director of Planning and Engineering, from Mike Reisner, our Director of Parks and Recreation, and Angel Albanese, our CFO. Total project cost is approximately $53 million. You could deduct from the 53 million, the 10 million that is the site improvements and the cost of the land. And then last year, as many of you know, the township received $3 million grant from the state of New Jersey, bringing the bond in front of you this evening for a request for $40 million. It is hoped that as you go out and have that go out through the bidding process that there'll be multiple bids and that hopefully at the end um, with competing bids, we might get the project for less than the 40, but you can't go out and do a public bidding process unless you have the funding in place for what we estimate the costs to be. That 40 million includes all of the rinks. It includes the furniture and fixtures in, inside, along with all of the financing costs. As we know, um, we will take the lowest responsible bidder. That's the state uh, requirement, um, but the funding needs to be made uh, available by your approval for a bid to go out to begin with. Based on our estimates of uh, the pilot money that has come into the township so far, that's if no new um, uh, effort was made at the redevelopment, which we know is continuing, but just from what we have coming in today, 50% of that money would cover the ongoing costs of the life of the loan or bond that would cover this. The other 50% would continue to go to tax stabilization. And as residents should know, they can go to their bills over the last six years. Taxes, municipal portion of tax bills, the only port of the tax that we have any control over, has remained under 1% over the last seven years. Uh, so our intention is to continue a process that gives back to the community, and this is our first big effort at giving back something to the community, while we've already shown that the um, work of redevelopment has kept taxes stable. I think we could do both. And over time, as we have more pilot money come in, we look forward to being able to introduce a community center and an expansion of the community arts center in a way that still allows us to keep property taxes stable from the municipal uh, standpoint. So I'm gonna turn it over to DMR and, um, and let you move forward with your portion. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, 
Good evening, uh, Council. Um, I am, my name is Kurt Verheilig, and I'm partner and director of design with DMR Architects. And let's see, Keith is bringing up the plan. Um, I was uh, integrally involved um, in working with your team and our consultants to develop the uh, ice rink project that, uh, that we're presenting here this evening. Um, <clears throat> so what we have here is this is the uh, first floor plan. And just um, as a little bit of orientation to how the building is uh, situated, um, route on the left of the image is Route 1. Tice's Lane would be on the bottom, and that is also facing north. Um, there's a wooded area on the top and to the right, and then there'll be parking lot on the right side and on the bottom. Um, Keith has a site plan, which he'll share with you a little bit later. Um, uh, for any additional site um, information. So um, the main entrance to the building um, is off of one of the parking lots. Um, as you can see here, it's on the right side. And the general circulation is identified in blue. And this is kind of what we call the warm area of the building. Um, and uh, the cold area, therefore, would be the, the ice rink area. Um, so the front of house area is where the support spaces are. Um, for the facility. So we have um, the main entrance and lobby here, which um, is um, appropriately sized uh, for access and queuing um, for people that are coming in. Uh, most of that queuing will be on days of open skate days. Um, so it, it, the space is, um, is large enough to accommodate the, the, the queuing lines and stanchions to support that circulation. And then the rest of the space is also um, appropriate for when there are um, tournaments and larger uh, activities and events that are happening. There's adequate space for people to, um, to gather and congregate and, and wait. Um, so as we, as we come into the, into the building, um, the lobby here we have on the right would be our support and our information area where you can rent uh, skates. Um, that, that position is um, located such that you can have good visibility um, to all the public spaces. So um, down um, into the left, this purple area here was, is a raised platform, and that's um, elevated um, viewing and seating inspector area in the warm space. Um, there'll be um, glass, um, full glass wall there that views out to um, rink one, which is the main rink with um, seating for approximately 400 people. Um, as you look up to the right, we have an area here which is um, changing area for uh, changing and putting on skates and whatnot, and there's a seating area in this location, and that gives access to rink two, which is the public skate rink. Um, in addition to that, we've got a small, um, we've got a party room, which, is, um, which can be rented out, and it also has an operable partition, which can be um, closed up to make t uh, smaller spaces for other program and activities that may happen in the facility. Um, as we go down uh, past uh, the viewing and the elevated viewing and spectator area, um, we have a multi-purpose space. So that's nearly a thousand square foot multi-purpose space with a very high ceiling. And again, that space um, can be multi-use uh, and, and programmed. Um, it can be used when there's tournaments. It can be used for programming. Um, uh, for the uh, facility itself when they have um, events or program that they will be offering. Um, there is a full um, um, concession stand, and that concession stand will be um, the purpose of that to service and support the patrons um, on a regular basis. Um, and um, also, again, since tournaments will be a, uh, something that is um, a, a big draw and is important to um, the facility, that they have the, the um, kitchen and preparation facilities be able to support that kind of activity. Um, the, the salmon areas, you can see uh, interspersed here are some of the support um, offices and um, um, of, for the management and operators of the facility. And <clears throat> so uh, rink one, as I mentioned, uh, is the main rink, uh, 400 seating capacity. Rink two on the top, about 200 seating capacity. Um, the, the rinks are full-size um, um, regulation 
uh, ice rink. So uh, there's, you know, it, this is going to meet all regulations necessary uh, for playing competitive hockey um, events. And then back um, in the middle here, in this tan area, we have the um, the locker rooms, uh, spaces for the uh, for the operation and the players and the team. So we've got eight team locker rooms located here. We've got two girls locker rooms here, and then we have at the end we have two team rooms, which could be dedicated, you know, as determined. I think at this point, not really sure exactly how they'll be assigned, but those will be for the the teams that will be called this ice rink um, is their home base, um, and then. Um, each one of those has a complement of bathrooms and showers to support um, those functions of, uh, of the locker room. And then the back of house on the far left, all these gray spaces are just support spaces um, for the Zamboni, for the refrigeration, for mechanical, electrical, um, and all the HVAC systems necessary for the functionality of the facility. And then um, there's also, in addition to support of the locker rooms and the function of play, there's um, two sp um, smaller locker rooms on the outskirts, which are the referee um, locker rooms. So the building is a two-story building. And as you come into the, the lobby, you see kind of um, central to that, that, that core area of the lobby, there's a stair and an elevator. Um, that will take up to the second floor. And Keith, if you could. So the second floor is the portion of the building since the, the hockey rink, the height requires a, um, this, you know, a significant height for clearance and proper play, um, the, the middle portion of the building is over the locker room spaces. So we've um, utilized those spaces um, for second floor area with full access, elevator access and vertical um, um, circulation. And basically the blue areas along here are um, additional viewing. Um, viewing uh, areas. So from higher up on the second floor, you can, the games can also be viewed from those locations. And then in the middle area here is, um, is additional support spaces, could be um, storage spaces, could be potential rental, rental space um, to um, outside um, user um, that may have some sort of connection with the, the functionality of the, of the, the hockey rink. But um, at this point, it's approximately 3,500 square feet, which is a flexible space that can be um, programmed later. Um, we have accommodated for a plumbing needs and whatnot if it is going to become an office or, uh, or that kind of type of space. So um, that in the future, it's, um, we can leverage that and utilize it um, to its potential. Um, Are any of those, those walls around that Flexible space? Are they structural? These, yeah, uh, well, they're all, per they're all permanent because this is going to actually be conditioned in there since the rink is going to be kept at, um, at a, a standard I was if temperature. There, if there were structural walls and could be they, these, moved or, or? They are, they're not, they're not load bearing. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the, the one, the, oh, however, these in the middle are um, those rectangles are where there's columns and then there's also yeah. um, HVAC. Sure, understood, that goes but, down but the perimeter of that is not a load bearing partition. No. So should that need to be moved or something else to accommodate a different use in the future, even if you wanted to put additional gallery seating up there no, right. or something that could be Good, easily correct. accommodated. Not, not there. Thank you. Okay, um, you wanna to switch to the rent. Is there any questions on the plans before I switch to the exterior? Um, I have one other question, if you don't mind, uh, Council President. Yes. Um, the concession space, is that designed with all the fixtures and all of that in the specs and yeah. will be part of the contract yeah. to be completely yes. fit out as a working kitchen yes. with a hood yes. and all of that? Yes. It's, it's not shown here, but it is um, in the plans fully detailed. Okay. Our consultant I just has, want to make sure we've got the Ansel system yes. and the hood and all of that as part of the, the docks so that we're not coming back and trying it's, to it's all fit in out a kitchen at a later date. Yes, it's all Thank in you. there. Okay, so... so the diagram again, you kept... So then to that point, we also have a grease trap? That, that would, that's a, yeah, it's, it's required for a, a, yeah. a kitchen. Okay. 
when using your pointer, um, direct me to the uh, primary location, which would be the management's office. Okay. So on, on a regular basis, there'll be a, um, w a person sitting at the reception here. And so that's um, a staff member. We have three management offices um, located in this area. And then we have one, this is the skate instructor's office, um, who is in charge of the, the programming for the skate lessons and other activities in terms of that. And that's why we place that in this vicinity, because that person will be, um, that's the closest access to that. So the, the, the question still remains, is that big enough? Yes. Yes, we've, um, in close, uh, in working very closely with our um, ice rink consultants um, who they, they own rinks, they build rinks, they operate rinks. Um, we worked very closely with them to determine what the um, necessary amount of space is, not, you know, overly estimating for, you know, build it and they will come, but what's necessary to operate a facility of this size. So we have incorporated um, what is necessary uh, for this facility. Do the same thing with the, your pointer and show me the, the uh, let's call it the, uh, the Red Cross area, the emergency area. There's a game going on and uh, it's between two Cub Scout packs and uh, one kid doesn't know what he's doing and he runs over another kid and there's blood running profusely all over the rink and they drag the kids somewhere. Where are they dragging them? So they would, um, they would take them into, um, into this space here. So it's, there's, um, there's a first aid room. And, uh, and, on, and I, in, in addition, there is also, I believe there's also someone, um, someone on hand um, at, if there's a competition. Uh, to be able to um, take care of people right. if there is an injury, um, there's pro there's procedures and protocols for the for the rink for when they're practicing, when there's games. Obviously, a game is more competitive atmosphere. I believe that they will have uh, someone on hand to be able to um, to handle that. So again, based on, on your research, you're happy with you're happy with that size. Yes. Okay. Because there's not a full time. Um, First aid person, huh? right there. But there, there's a, there's a staff of there's a staff of thirty, probably, in the, and around. You know, covering the, you know, from the, from yeah. the man oh, who's call driving Mike. a Zamboni, and that's not Mr. Baker, <laughs> but uh, picking up the garbage, making sure the ice is. Yeah, at the I right mean, this, this building will have, um, you know, really, it's maybe five five or six people. It's really not the operation of it is not a very staff intensive facility. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's not. It's not 30. No, it's, no. It's five, seven, nine no. people. Yeah, it's not. To, to, operate in, to operate is not a heavy, heavy um, personnel. Okay. Um, do, you, do you, in your professional opinion, recognize this as a pr premier version of uh, uh, a, a, a two-sheet ice rink? Or is this, oh, this is very common, uh, Mr. Councilman. No, this, I mean. Um, is it Cadillac version? The, the design of the facility is um, state of the art. It's not, um, we don't believe that it's excessive in providing um, spaces and amenity that aren't necessary to the operation. So the, the, biggest, um, the biggest and most important thing, as the mayor had indicated, is that the two sheets gives the the facility the biggest potential to be able to um, be profitable in a shorter amount of time. Um, one sheet, um, I'll, for example, the a mechanical, the equipment to cool the, the space and ice is nearly the same, the cost to do that as it is with one sheet or two sheets. So when the mayor had mentioned about the cost differential between adding another sheet, mm -hmm. all that, the, the equipment and the investment in the infrastructure of that is pretty much the same whether it's one or two. So, um, but to answer your question about the um, premier. premier nature, it, it is um, from our, um, from what we've seen, we believe this is gonna be the premier 
facility in the area. Right. This is, we, that's what we're hoping for. Yes. My research has taken I, me down that we road. We believe that, that we are going to be we the don't clear. believe it's Middle Cadillac Six, with we, we don't believe it's Cadillac with unnecessary um, bells and whistles. We believe it's has everything it needs and it's going to be done with long-term longevity and um, quality. And therefore the is there enough seating for a there, premier event that comes so our we, way? So we believe that the seating um, is more than adequate, um, being that the tournaments are the are when you get the most amount of participation. So, in addition to just the regular fixed seating, which you see in orange, we do have that upper, that second floor mezzanine also that will allow you to have additional capacity, um, should that be necessary. And from the architectural position, um, does the sheet, does does the sheet and the rink last forever? Or does this get wear and tear like a, a turf football field and after 15 years we have to redo the whole thing? No, you, you, you will not have to redo the, the, the ice, I mean, the, uh, the ice or the, the boards with the prop obviously getting and utilizing and specifying the, the proper equipment. Um, so. Uh, we believe we specified the equipment that is um, going to last and be long, have a longevity to it. And like I mentioned about the Cadillac, like we've used the and specified the equipment that is long term and that's going to last. Um, and the the majority of of the of keeping the the facility um, up and running is the efficiency of the refrigeration system because that refrigeration system cools the ice and also cools the space. Thank you, Mr. Verheyle. Please. Um, just to add a couple of things. Um, from my experience with working with, with these facilities, um, the concrete and the refrigeration lines and all of that do not gain any wear and tear because you're, you're skating on top of a surface that's above the concrete. Um, so, as such, you're not you're not seeing wear and tear on those surfaces. Yes, the boards and the glass and all of that, they're going to take some wear and tear and need to be replaced, specifically. You know, not all of it, but that one or this one. Um, but outside of that, I just wanted to add that from my experience, uh, Council President. But um, outside of that. Do you have a potential list of value engineering items that you're kind of tracking on this facility should the bids come in higher than we imagine or expect? Um, and I would assume most, if you do have that, most of that is an exterior cladding issue then more than anything else. So there's, um, the exterior is, is an, is one of the options for some of the materials, the metal panel or the mm -hmm. cement board panels. Um, that um, there's, so to answer, so the exterior, there are a few items there. Um, for the interior, it really comes down to, you know, Programming. to finishes. Yeah. There's some of the finishes which, you know, the flooring, like we've picked the, the rubber flooring that's mm -hmm. durable rubber flooring right. that's gonna that's going to hold up and last to the use yeah, of the skates. Yeah, I mean, you don't, have to, you don't have to pull them all um, out for me. I just yeah, want to like know that you had we have, we have some a things few. that you're tracking have, that. We do, we do have some items for, that are you know, um, on, on a list to be uh, incorporated for that purpose. Okay. That's all I want to know. I want to know, you know we're, we're not designed to the bare minimum, nor do, no. we, nor do I want a, a, you know, and I've seen the elevations before, nor do I want a split-face block on the outside or anything like that. I want this to look good. I want it to be a premier event, nor do I want it to be a pole barn. Okay. So, you know, um, people who sat in those seats out there in the past with some of our things liked pole barns, and it's not anybody that's sitting there right now, but Keith, you know, who I'm <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Well, and I plan to value engineer for sure. When the bids come in, I'm going to look at everything. Um, of course. Thank you. Okay. Mayor. And we'll, um, yeah, okay. Um, so um, here we've, uh, we've prepared a couple um, renderings. 
Uh, this, this particular rendering is looking um, from the north towards the south. This is where um, the approach and entry into the parking lot, where the roundabout will be. Um, so as you can see, we've got the building um, um, here on the right side is the main entrance. Uh, on the left side would be the, uh, would be the um, taller volume space where the, the ice um, sheets are at. And, and then in the foreground, we have that multi-purpose space um, element here. So we've, we've really worked to take the building because of the scale and the size and break that down into uh, some different um, interesting massings. Um, it's, a big, it's a big volume, it's a big building, so we, we feel that we've um, successfully accomplished that by the use of um, some of the different materials. And uh, so I'll start with, you know, we've, we kind of, we started with this um, metal panel white frame element. So that kind of wraps up and over, kind of frames in the building, um, the large um, volume of the building. Then kind of captured within that, you'll see these gray area, which these are cement board panels. Um, and so we're just using a standard uh, panel size, we've introduced three colors to kind of take that larger facade and break it down into something a little more, have a little more scale and um, kind of commonality. Um, incorporated onto that large facade, we've incorporated um, some logo, we've incorporated the name of the facility, um, and we've done that in a couple other spaces. We're incorporating some uh, wood um, looking wood look panel again these are these are cement board panels um, as a cladding and that kind of bring a little warmth to contrast uh, all, you know all the whites and gray uh, palette and hues um, in the in the kind of the foreground here this corner element this is a standing seam uh, metal panel um, utilized vertically on the wall and then kind of that captures this uh, cow wall translucent um, panel here so um, in a, in a nice rink, uh, you know, we would like we would like to have natural light, but um, there's a few things. You know, you want to maintain the, the temperature, and you want to avoid um, in direct sunlight and glare onto the sheet. So here, we we're taking the opportunity to incorporate natural light kind of from this area, and this corresponds with that raised viewing platform. So here, we'll be able to have the opportunity to bring some natural light into the into the space. In addition. Um, we've, there are a few areas where we incorporated skylights. Um, could you just go back real quick to the plan? So we've incorporated a couple areas with a similar cow wall skylight. Um, okay, and that, okay, yeah, that's, so this is the viewing area. In this area, we've incorporated one here, and we've also in this seating area here. So because of the depth of the building, um, because it's the, the, the orientation of the sheets, um, we took that opportunity, thought these would be good ways to bring some natural light deep into the core, since natural light is always a good thing to, to have and to uh, um, make a space that's habitable uh, more enjoyable. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. And we're using, that's the same, um, it's the cow wall translucent panel as a skylight. Um, and then the entrance, so we've identified here, we've got the entrance, which is you know very easy and distinct, uh, for, uh, for the users and um, patrons to identify. And, and again, we're using the same um, kind of framed wrapping of the, the, uh, the standing seam metal panel. And then we have a canopy extending out. And then we have um, glass wall in there that kind of extends into the lobby. So if you go to, want to go to the next one, we've got uh, So the next view is going to be as you're approaching from Route 1. Um, again, 18. Route 18. Route 18, I'm sorry. Route 18. Um, <clears throat> so this, uh, the Lowe's is on the left here. And you know, essentially, this is, this is the view kind of coming down, um, again, using different material palette and breaking up the scale of the, uh, the main volume of the building. Um, in the back here is service access um, to give access to where the, um, the equipment rooms are and uh, the Zambonis and uh, all the mechanical spaces. Um, and then the materiality is the same. We use a metal panel, wood looks, um, cement panel, and then 
the uh, What's the multicolor. What's the material on the roof? What's on the roof? What's on the roof? Oh, back here. Yeah. yeah so this. Oh, so. Right. So this area we car we carved away like a um, um, a portion of that, and we're using the same cement board panel, and then it has the signage on that also. So that's the space in between um, the Lowe's and okay. the. Um, the other uh, retail building that's in there. So no, it's not like it's not like CMU and stuff. No, no. Okay. It's this. It's this cement board. So yeah, okay, the cool. cement board is more economical yeah. um, of the of the materials on that facade. So we tried to take advantage of that and use that as much as possible. Okay, go to the the next one. So here's the uh, the main lobby entrance. So as you can as you can see here, um, we've got this. Um, focal point element. So, you know, as we, as we were looking at the, the space and designing, um, you know, what's gonna, what kind of speaks a little bit to ice rink, we came up with this, this idea of um, this ice cube uh, concept. So these are, um, these are cow wall color translucent panels, which we're just using to clad um, the stair and cover where the elevator are for the building. Um, so that we, we, we took what was a functional element and we turned it into uh, what we see as a kind of a focal point and feature element of the lobby. Um, so the ice cube element is, um, it'll, you know, it'll be illuminated. It will have that kind of very soft bluish um, hue to it. And uh, some of the, the cow wall panels are really nice, does a nice job of kind of giving a little bit of texture to that. Um, Flanking that on the sides, um, on the right is the rental area, so that's where kind of all the patrons will come in on the right, and then people will leave on the left and in the center. So the sets of doors are organized, entrance to the right, exit to the left. Um, the, you, you see the two rinks, so on the right and the back there, we've got the seating area and changing area um, for when there's public skate, so it's very intuitive, you know, rink one, rink two. In addition to that, um, on the left side of the entrance, we're gonna have two um, to TV screens, which will uh, um, project and show, you know, events that are happening, games, when there's games, which rink, you know, what time, where they're going to be, or other just programs that are happening at the arena. Um, and then to the left here, you can see we have that raised platform. Uh, we've got the glass, full glass wall that views out to the main rink. And then just around the corner there is the concession area. All right, you can go to the next, to Keith. And then here we've got a view from the uh, second floor viewing area. And now this is looking um, back towards the warm space and towards the elevated um, um, spectator viewing. So uh, we just, you've got, you know, the focal point of the main rink. Uh, on the opposite side, you have the spectator um, bleachers. Uh, on the top here, additional uh, seating. I mean, additional standing room for viewing. Um, and then underneath is uh, the locker room spaces. And then I think the, the last one is just the, the rendering, which just, if there's any other questions. Uh, Great job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I'm Keith Kipp, Director of Planning and Engineering. Thank you for having me here. Kurt, excellent job. Thank you very much. Um, I had to do this whole presentation by myself, so with Kurt, big help. Mayor, you took a lot of the weight off me too, so this, mine should be pretty straightforward. Uh, what I'm just, I'm gonna discuss the site plan. I got it. I was gonna use my mouse, that's why I'm sitting down. That's my excuse. So again, what, what you just saw, this is the new Rene Road that'll be coming down. Uh, north is up in this drawing, which is kind of opposite of Kurt's architectural drawings. Lowe's parking lot is over here and, the, and the, the fitness center to the right of the screen. And the 110 Tysis legacy development will all be on the north side of this roundabout, which will be, is currently being constructed. Uh, the site plan was designed by our staff, um, our in-house staff did all the, uh, everything except for the storm sewer, which we had CME designed to be um, current with stormwater management regulations. 
And for the stormwater, there's two underground systems. Um, the system to the south is strictly for roof runoff because there's no vehicle runoff that adds to that. And then there's a system underneath this parking lot that is for all the vehicle runoff or parking lot runoff. And so the, the flow to the, the site is if you would come off of Tysus Lane, which is to, to the north, and the intersection with Rene Road, you'd come down and be perpendicular to our site. You could enter in through the roundabout, and this is one way. The drop-off area for buses is, is in front of the front doors, which is in this area. And then what we plan to do is, is with buses, is have a, a, a lease agreement with Lowe's, so that if we have a big tournament and there's a lot of buses, the buses could park there, while all the, the rest of the guests and, and the competitors can, can park in the parking lot. Um, we do have LED lighting throughout. Um, the Legacy Place, uh, Garden Homes is the developer. Again, as the mayor mentioned, they are uh, doing approximately a million and a half dollars worth of site improvements, so they'll do all the curbs all the lighting, all the, the utilities coming in, gas, electric, water mains, uh, sanitary sewers, that's all um, that they're doing. Um, obviously, the topography of this, the, the land made it so that we have to put some retaining walls just to make sure everything is level. So they'll be installing those retaining walls and, and all the utilities that go with that. What about uh, the storm? The storm sewer? Yeah. The storm sewer is included. Okay. You didn't say storm. I just wanted to confirm that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. actually, both under underground systems are already in. Okay. Great. Um, and they're working on the rest of the parking lot uh, surface drainage Thanks. currently. So they're moving along well with that site. And, and again, like I said, our our staff did this design, and um, CME did the, the the storm sewer design. And other than that. Um, any questions on the flow of the site? Basically, like I said, if you come in off the roundabout, you can go either back out the roundabout and head either way back towards Tysus Lane or to, to Route 18, or you could come in and out through this side as well, which is adjacent to Lowe's. Any questions on any of that? All right, that's, uh, that's my presentation. Next up is uh, Mike Reisner, Director of Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Uh, good, good evening, folks. I have no slide, so I'll stand up. <laughs> um, so our staff has visited uh, several uh, rinks, or many rinks throughout the state, um, not only to get design, uh, design ideas and how the facilities are laid out, but also to talk about programming and how the facilities are ultimately used. Um, as Mayor Cohen had, had also mentioned, uh, he had formed the East Brunswick uh, Ice Arena Committee, which is made up of people with various backgrounds uh, who have brought a ton of good information to this project. Uh, their backgrounds range from figure skating to ice hockey um, to architects to engineers uh, and people who have been in this industry. So their input has been very valuable in terms of creating this design, but also talking about um, how the building will eventually be utilized. Um, Youth, adult hockey, uh, women's hockey is becoming very popular. In tournaments was, was very important to the group. Um, as Mary Cohen mentioned, our own East Brunswick High School now has a team, uh, which we anticipate would uh, use the facility as their home base. Uh, figure skating, learn to skate programs, learn to play hockey programs. We've also, as, as many of you know in council, have a uh, a very well run uh, program for adults and children with special needs called the Daisy Recreation Program. Uh, and we anticipate that therapeutic rec programs will be part of this facility, um, even go so far as to uh, participating in Special Olympic programs. Uh, public skating is very popular in the around surrounding uh, rinks that we, sp when we spoke to. Um, birthday parties, uh, there's two rooms uh, currently uh, dedicated towards, towards that activity as well. The second floor and mezzanine level is kind of to be determined, but we anticipate that will be offering to a lot of other community um, uh, potential recreational uh, programs, meeting space. Uh, so there is a lot of possibility to, in that second floor area, as well as providing a, uh, a really good uh, viewing area, viewing space for the popular uh, tournaments and games that are, that are held there. The multi-purpose room also could be a potential fitness area for the community. 
um, and also some other smaller recreational activities. Um, in particular, we would anticipate that our very successful and large day camp program this summer would, would visit the facility as well. Uh, another uh, local trip for our kids in town, um, various hockey camps, learn to skate camps, figure skating camps uh, were very popular in a lot of the rinks that we visited around the state as well. I've, we've been personally contacted by a lot of the uh, youth hockey organizations in New Jersey, coaches, local programs, um, showing interest in the facility from the beginning um, of this uh, project, uh, the work on this project. Um, showing a lot of interest in using the facility and partnering and coming to uh, um, to use the space as well in cooperation with um, you know if and when this facility is, is built so there has been certainly a buzz about um, this particular building <clears throat> Please. Um, Mike you mentioned the our, our very successful day camp program that your uh, your department runs which you currently go skating, take those kids skating for the day camp at other facilities that we pay for. Correct. Which at this point, we would either pay the facility or pay, you know, to offset the costs of this facility at a, a cheaper rate rather than paying some commercial, you know, retail run establishment. Correct? Cor correct. And it would be more efficient to, to you know, with transportation being... Sure costly as it is right now it'd be more efficient to stay in town for sure yeah just wanted to confirm that <clears throat> Customer Wendell, my, my research showed that anywhere mike you can you can attest to this or discredit me on this anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of total revenue comes from summer campers uh, the, of the facilities that I visited in the summer, uh, they were quite busy. Yes, there, there were a lot of uh, camps yeah. going on uh, at multiple times. Most of the facilities I visited were two sheets, if not three. Right. Um, so contrary to what I expected uh, during the summer months in a cold facility, um, they were quite busy, yes. Right. That's, that's good news. Mayor? Oh, good day. Yep, just a quick question. So I know we spoke about this and it was clarified again that much smaller amount of staff will be needed for this as compared to something like Crystal Springs where we mm -hmm. have an enormous, a huge amount of staff. We are considering, we are going to be doing our, we're going to try to do the whole thing with East Brunswick employees. Is that the plan that we're going with? That's the direction I believe we are headed, yes. So to employ, you know, people, give them opportunity as much as possible, right? Yes. Okay. Um, that's all I have for that right now. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Mr. Roger. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. And I guess uh, it's up to you, Angel, to close it out. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Angel Albanese. I'm the Director of Finance and the Chief Financial Officer. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, members of Council. Um, I'm going to cover two areas, the re operational results we anticipate and also the financing. So let me summarize the results of the pro forma financial analysis of the ice rink operations first. Um, as Kirkin mentioned, he's, and, and also Mike, we've talked to many experts in the field who've been involved in operations of ice skating rinks throughout the country, and in particular in the Northeast. Our focus, in addition to that, was primarily on the demand and the actual operations and experiences of the New Jersey municipal and county facilities, in particular the Woodbridge rinks and Oldbridge ice rinks. Taking these sources of revenue into consideration, and the cost of operations, we anticipate the estimated net revenue exclusive of cost to finance the facility to be approximately 500 to 750,000 per year for the first two to three years as we begin to grow the leagues and gain contracts with various um, ice hockey uh, organizations, growing to about $1 million per year. To fund the construction, we initially will be borrowing notes 
As was mentioned, we have a $3 million grant from the Department of Community Affairs from the state of New Jersey, which is incorporated in the bond, and we will be reimbursed for those costs. Uh, once the, so initially we're going to borrow notes. Once the project has been completed, we would seek sec to secure permanent financing or continue to fund through notes and could possibly work the notes um, looking for different opportunities to finance the project over a longer period uh, by selling bonds. And this will really be dependent, the timing of that would be dependent upon the interest rates at the, as the time comes, once construction is completed. And that concludes my discussion. I don't know if anyone has any comments, questions. I got one question if you don't mind. Please. What, what's your original anticipated annual cost for the, for the, the bonds or notes? I mean, at the 40, 40 million or so that were 43 million. Um, that will be dependent upon the interest rates. Uh, right what's your, now, what's your we, pro forma showing at this point? Uh, well, we're looking mostly at the rates per se, but mm -hmm. right now the interest rates are 3.7, and um, for us in a in a favorable position because right. most towns are at five percent. Right. Um, so our estimate right now is that. Uh, you know, we have to really see what's going to happen over the next few years mm -hmm. because there's a 50% likelihood that that interest rates will be lower than they are right now. Sure. So. Um, okay. Um, and, and to the mayor's uh, point earlier, most of that can be handled through the anticipated pilot funds or at least 50% of the anticipated pilot funds, at least for the first couple of years until yes. we start gaining mm -hmm. revenue. Right, we wouldn't... Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we expect this to be self-liquidating, just as our pool is and, and all of that, and our pool has been very successful over the years, and, and that's my anticipation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say definitely for the operations, for the yes. construction, it's an investment, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, for the first three years, even if we borrow temporary financing, we don't have to pay any of that down initially. Um, oh. So we have some time to really work out what is the best position and opportunity for us. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think okay. that uh, pretty much covers all the areas that uh, we were concerned about and it touches um, and it gave an opportunity to follow up on the type of presentation we got when uh, we brought DMR to, to uh, start the project. So now, you know, I think it's a, a great day for us to be at a point where we could finally give back to the community something really tangible um, besides the, the property tax stabilization we've been able to provide um, because this was the purpose of uh, redevelopment from, from the beginning. So uh, I, I thank you, Council President. Welcome, Frank, Mayor. Any final comments on, on the presentations? I'm excited. Extremely. Extremely. Because I'm coming from a, look, a place where, because um, all, all of us, all of us on the dais, constantly talking with the community. And it was, it was rec, 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 rec department, rec center, um, pool, and then ice hockey. But then as the conversations began and the conversations extended, just, just won over for a host of reasons that uh, will come out of my mouth spanning the next series of meetings to make sure this passes in, a, in, in, in the correct way. One, one quick thing for, for Keith, I guess, uh, or Kurt, or even the mayor. Um, we currently have plans and specs and bid documents. That's what we're talking about here tonight. So the expectation is to go out to bid six to eight weeks in the bidder's hands or so before bids need to be returned and then award award something by mid to late September. Exactly. I think that's what, uh, you know. Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than that. Uh, the bid document or the printout right here that Keith has in front of him, that's the size of the bid document. It's about this yeah. thick. Um, remember, we've got first reading tonight, second re uh, or the public hearing on the uh, next agenda for this. 
got an uh, advertisement requirement for the bond and a 20-day estoppel period in which that oh for the bond so we can so he, uh, Keith cannot advertise until after the estoppel period oh. is over okay. at that point he can can advertise I just caution you with a project of this size you may want to leave it sit out a little bit longer and I'd look to to DMR and our well, ice experts I know when I was doing the community center in, in Piscataway we let it sit out a little bit longer because there's a lot of disciplines uh, as you can see in the in the presentation and it is a rather lengthy uh, plan to go through and it is, it is highly specified work I wouldn't so, go any more than eight weeks eight weeks it gets stale okay that's that so uh, just you know. just to give you a time frame where we're, we're we got to wait till the estoppel period no, I, is I, over. I appreciate that. You're so, welcome. So what we're looking for, looking at, ideally, is a groundbreaking in the spring. Uh, we're not, we're not uh, going to no. go on the ground uh, before I the end of the year. you could do groundbreaking before the end of the year. You yeah. think so? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And also for the bid, I just want to point out that Garden Homes is actively working on the site. Mm -hmm. And the more work we have done, the better it is for a bidder to come and see it. Exactly. Yes, there is a building pad that's prepared. Yeah, I'm not concerned about that. You got a, you got a, you got a, you got a, a, a detailed set of documents there. It's a real deal. They know what's coming. They know it's real. I, I just, I see if you're not going out until potentially September 1st at, at you know, um, eight weeks. You're not getting bid. You're not getting bids and awarding bids until November. I don't think you're breaking ground until the spring. Yeah, it's possible, but I don't. I don't. I think. If we I mean, listen. Winter, I, like I, would, I would. Last year. I would love to be aggressive, yeah. but what I'm getting at is, you know, we don't know what the winter is going to bring. I mean, yes, we can put foundations in December, but do we want to spend extra money for potential, you know, thawing of the ground or, or, or you know, digging through frost or whatever? I, yeah. I just, I, I want to be, I want the public to understand that that, you know. Getting in before the end of the year, I think, is an aggressive pace, which I would love to stay on. But I think you probably are looking at a springtime groundbreaking. Yes, it depends. You know? I think it depends on the weather and the sure. contractor. If we have of course. Someone that it's How quickly can that contractor yeah. mobilize after we give the award? I have Councilwoman uh, Winston on Zoom. Councilwoman? Uh, yes, I have audio. Yes. Excuse me. Um, thank you, Council President. I, I may have missed this, so I apologize because it's just audio here. But um, if you're thinking about creating a profit center, um, specifically with the kitchen, I'm just urging the committee members who may be present to think about um, making sure there's a pizza oven in there so that if you are hosting kids' parties, um, even if, it, even if the, the kitchen's rented out to a, a third-party vendor, they have the capacity to do that. I highly recommend that as well, and a fryer for chicken fingers and uh, french fries. Oh, That's yes. the biggest sellers in Woodbridge. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely a grill and a fryer. Mike and I will look into the pizza oven. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you.